Hey guys, welcome to Matrix. So in this video, we will be discussing about the anatomy of ear. Okay, so we'll not. So we'll be just going over the brief overview of what you need to understand of the basic anatomy of ear. Okay, so anatomy of ear it's divided into first. Firstly, we have the external ear, followed by the middle ear, and lastly, we do have the inner ear. So this is the basic. division of the ear external ear middle ear and the inner ear so what do we have so we need to understand is the external ear it begins with the pinna followed by the external auditory canal ending with the tympanic membrane from the tympanic membrane up to the oval window round window so this entire cavity forms the middle ear and from these windows to the basic coil that is the cochlea followed by the three semicircular canals and the utricle and the sacchia so this forms the inner ear okay so this is the external ear middle ear and the inner ear so we'll be first beginning with the external ear what you need to understand with the external ear is that external ear we have something called as the external pinna okay what does pinna do pinna acts as a receptacle to collect the uh, sounds that is a sound wave so we have the external A pinna like this, and uh, there are uh, few parts that you need to understand. Okay, what you have here is the helix. Followed by the helix, we do have here a shallow gap that is called as the simba concha. Simba concha. This is the ear lobule. Followed by, we do have the tragus. It is directed like this, tragus. and the structure here to that which is the antitragus okay and uh, we have here something called as the antihelix so these are the few parts of the external ear i know the diagram is not so good but yeah you can understand it and you can manage i guess so these are the external ear and uh, from moving on to the external ear we move on to the external auditory canal okay so moving on to the external auditory canal the total length is up to 24 mm it is divided into the outer one third and the inner two third okay outer one third is cartilaginous part followed by inner two third is the bony part So I told you the basic length is twenty four mm. So outer one third should be eight mm. For our by inner two third should be sixteen mm. Okay. So this is about the external auditory canal, and uh, after the external auditory canal comes the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane, which is a very important structure in the ear. So typically the tympanic membrane is angulated, and what is this this part is called as the pars tensa pars tensa and above we have is the pars flaccida okay and here directed downwards this part what i'm showing is the cone of light with the pars flaccida pars tensa and the cone of light and what you're seeing this is the basic handle of the malleus and this is what is visible on the tympanic membrane what are the layers we do have in the tympanic membrane we have a outer epithelial layer outer epithelial layer which is towards the external auditory canal and we do have the inner mucosal layer towards the middle ear middle ear and between these two we have the middle fibrous layer okay middle fibrous layer so these are the three layers of the tympanic membrane outer epithelial layer inner mucosal layer and the middle fibrous layer and what are the basic uh, nerve supply of the external ear so we need to understand nerve supply is by the greater auricular nerve greater auricular nerve and we have the auriculotemporal nerve 
auricular temporal nerve followed by we also have the auricular branch of the vagus auricular branch of the vagus that is the 10th cranial nerve okay so this it is also supplied by the lesser occipital lesser occipital nerve it is the c3 in this one so c2 and c3 so this is about the basic nerve supply of the external ear okay so this is a brief anatomy of the external ear so now moving on to the middle ear what do we have in the middle ear middle ear okay you need to understand the middle ear in terms of a cube so it is better to visualize it this way suppose this is the cube okay and what i am drawing here is the lateral wall lateral wall of the middle ear which is formed by the tympanic membrane okay so what will be opposite of the tympanic membrane that is this wall this is the medial wall medial wall and followed by we have the anterior wall this is the anterior wall and opposite to the anterior wall we have the posterior wall posterior wall and above will be the roof below will be the floor okay lateral wall is formed by the tympanic membrane then we have the opposite the medial wall where it opens into the oval window and the round window then uh, this is the anterior wall towards which it opens the eustachian tube and opposite we have the posterior wall followed by above roof and below floor basically what you need to understand is the structures forming the medial wall so uh, suppose this is the medial wall basic structure you see is the promontory which is due to the basal coil bulge of the cochlea cochlear basal coil bulge is seen on the promontory then we have the oval window here round window here then we also something called as a processes cochlear formis processes cochlear formis okay so this is the oval window round window and uh, this is the promontory promontory is innervated uh, by the tympanic plexus okay tympanic plexus formed by the glossopharyngeal nerve branch as well as the we have the sympathetic supply coming from the nerves surrounding the internal carotid artery okay so this forms the middle ear so i hope you understood the anatomy of the middle ear and uh, we also have um, something called as the bones of the middle ear okay which is also very very important let's look at that so what do we have we have three bones that is the malleus followed by the incus and stapes okay so this is the malleus i suppose if you are seeing it okay malleus and this is the incus which is like this then we do have the stapes okay malleus incus and stapes so these are the three bones of the middle ear and uh, what are all the parts you actually need to know this is the lateral process of malleus the neck of the malleus the head of the malleus this is the handle which is visible with the otoscope on seeing the tympanic membrane going to the incus this is the body okay then we have the long process long process of the incus so this is the stapes we have the head and then we have the anterior and the anterior and the posterior crura or crust you can say this is the foot plate So these are the three bones of the middle ear and uh, we do we also do have something called as the intratympanic muscles sometimes they might ask in your uh, university examinations what are intratympanic muscles it was asked in the recent feb 2023 examinations we do have two muscles that is the tensor tympani 
and the most well known is the stapedius muscle which helps in the dampening of the sun okay so these two are the tympanic intratympanic muscles the middle ear and we are missing something in the middle ear what is it yes you guessed it right that is the mastoid system okay mastoid system we have the basic mastoid ear cells which are connecting to the antrum followed by the editus and the attic which connects to the middle ear wall and this going out through the eustachian tube don't worry i'll name it down okay we do have the mastoid ear cells followed by we have the antrum the editus and the attic so basically this is the middle ear and what goes out here through the anterior wall is the eustachian tube so this is the mastoid ear cell system we have three types of ear cells first one is called as the well nematized well nematized or cellular you can say then we have the diploatic followed by lastly we have the sclerotic sclerotic or a cellular three types of air cells that you can find okay so this is about the mastoid the middle ear cavity and all so now we'll be moving on to the inner ear inner ear inner ear anatomy what basic you need to know inner ear anatomy we have something called as the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth okay i'm trying to teach it to you in a simple manner understand to we do have bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth <clears throat> in the bony labyrinth we have something called as the vestibule here we have two parts that is the utricle and the sacule followed by we also have semicircular canals lastly cochlea so this is all from the bony labyrinth in the membranous labyrinth we have the cochlear duct inside the cochlea cochlear duct followed by the utricle and sacule that is just told you okay then we also have the semicircular ducts basically the ducts that go into the bony labyrinth forms the membranous labyrinth and lastly you no know, you know need to forget endolymphatic duct or sac also you can say so this is about the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth what we have in the utricle and the sacule we have something called as the macula okay macula and this helps in the linear acceleration linear acceleration mm -hmm. and in the semicircular canals we have the crista ampullaris crista ampullaris and this helps in the dynamic acceleration okay so that's about it then what do we have in the cochlea cochlear duct if i take a cut section you can see something like this okay so this is the scala vestibuli scala media and the scala tympani okay scala vestibuli scala media and the scala tympani and this is divided by the resonance membrane this is the resonance membrane here we have the tectorial membrane followed by the inner hair cells outer hair cells and basic conduction of the sound that you can understand so this is about the anatomy of the inner ear okay so yes guys thank you thank you so much thank you for watching the video till the end if you like it make sure you keep watching okay we come up with much more videos like this thank you so much and bye